Hi, everybody. Our scripture for today is 2 Samuel chapter 13, and this is a difficult text, which means keeping this talk short is going to be really, really difficult. This is the story of David's daughter Tamar and his son Amnon, and Amnon's rape of Tamar. It's a difficult story, not just because of sexual violence. It's a difficult story because of the response. And so it begins with David sending Tamar to his son Amnon with food. He's having her bring him dinner. And when she goes to his house and presents him with food, he then takes advantage of her and rapes her. And after this has occurred, she puts ashes on her head, she tears her robe, and she runs out into the street weeping loudly. Now, the weeping loudly is a little bit misleading. This is not just a loud cry. This is the same kind of cry that the Israelites proclaimed to God when they were in captivity in Egypt, when they cried out to God to deliver them from, them, from their captivity. This is the same crying out that David does in the Psalms when his life is being pursued and he cries out to God asking for protection and deliverance. This is an outcry for justice. Now David hears about this and he is outraged, but he's faced with a problem because Amnon is the next in line for the throne. And so in order for David to pursue justice, means upsetting a lot of the plans that he has for the future. It means instability for the nation. And David chooses the side of what's known, of the course that had been planned, instead of seeking justice. David chooses to turn a blind eye. Now, David's other son, Absalom, who was Tamar's full brother, is not willing to accept this outcome and in his rage, pursues and kills Amnon. So this is a story of sexual violence. It's a story of injustice. It's a story of murder in response. There is all kinds of complexity in this, and it would take an awful long time for us to unpack everything that's happening. But where I would like for us to zero in is in this outcry, the Hebrew word za'ak, because it's very familiar in our culture right now. We have a lot of different protests that are taking place, from racial injustice to police violence to iniquity across the board. There are all kinds of different places where we see injustice taking place, systemic injustice. Oftentimes, this has taken place for a long time, and the crying out is getting incredibly expressive because the response has been dull and ineffective. The willingness to respond to that which is not right has been muted by a desire to maintain course and keep the status quo. We see this happening around us all the time, and many of us don't know what to do in our culture, which poses the question of how do we engage and listen, especially when the story somebody needs to proclaim to us is difficult to hear, especially when it threatens norms for us, especially when it puts us in a position of needing to do something that is challenging on all fronts. And yet this is where the ministry of the community of faith is supposed to be. We are called to be a people who engage with difficult topics. We are called to be a people who compassionately listen and will hear out, especially those who have their voice muted or who are given no voice at all. We are called to stand up for those who are most vulnerable, that as a community we gather together, we insist upon justice because justice is a prerequisite for peace. As people who seek to be part of the good work God is doing, as followers of Jesus, we are called to do the hard work of listening, engaging, and responding, being people who insist upon justice so that we can be participants in peace.